Ladies and gents, welcome back. Things are looking grim for Canadians in this Canadian economy. I mean, if you own your own house outright, well, you're probably not even going to have to pay attention to this. But most people who don't own a home are looking at, well, financial insecurity moving forward indefinitely in Canada as, as far as the eye can see. Inflation numbers jumped to 3.3% in July. Economists say that the this is bad news for the Bank of Canada. Now, I reported on this before. The numbers they, that they give are just completely inaccurate. Uh, they, they have a basket of goods, the CPI, as they call it, the Consumer Price Index, is supposed to measure inflation. But what it is, is it's, it's, inf it's, it's measuring the, the, the effects of inflation. Inflation is really just a monetary phenomenon where they print more money. They may, well, they, they don't, they'll say that they don't print it. They actually uh, issue new currency through lines of credit. Uh, same thing. They're making more currency, putting more of it out there, diluting what the currency's value was at, at the time and making it less valuable. So in turn, prices go up. So they try to measure it using the CPI, but then they just keep flubbing the numbers. Now, this is, uh, well, come to light in recent times because of, well, how much everything has been going up in price. But, you know, when they flubbed the numbers last month, they got to a 2.8%, and Christia Freeland was celebrating over this. We have uh, Melissa Lansman, uh, MP, uh, second in charge on the conservative side, saying, last month, an out-of-touch finance minister celebrates this month, Canada's inflation rose to 3.3%. And I would say it's a lot higher than that. But this is just what they're saying. But this is what she had to say last month. You didn't ask me about this, going Matt. To, but I can't had... believe it. Okay. Inflation. We had our inflation number on Tuesday. 2.8%. Isn't that great? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. We are now within the Bank of Canada's target range. This is huge. Yeah, well, it turns out they, they weren't actually. When it came down to the numbers, so you see the CPI ratings here, country by country. If you look in the notes, it'll tell you that, you know, every country measures their own CPI differently. So this is kind of apples and oranges and bananas. We, we're not really comparing the same thing to the same thing. We just happen to be better at flubbing our numbers. That's really what it comes down to. I gave uh, an example of this to Chrystia Freeland on Twitter. The cost of food purchased from grocery stores increased 9.1% annually in June. Meat was up 6.9%. Bakery products, 129 Dairy products, 74 Fresh fruits, 104 But the things that Canadians don't need as much, like cell phones, fell, bringing the CPI number down. And these are the things that as soon as uh, prices go down, unexpected, you know, fuel prices going down, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't so unexpected when they brought in the new fuel levy tax uh, and carbon tax, they, the, the fuel suppliers dropped the price of fuel so that they wouldn't stop selling fuel. I mean, when they increase too much, people stop buying things. And this is what we have been noticing in the economy. Now, getting to some of the numbers that they actually show in this article, because you have to scroll way down to actually get some of the facts here. Canada's unemployment rate has been on the rise in the last three months, reaching 5.5%. That is huge. That is a number that we shouldn't see. It's long. It's longer trajectory back to the inflation target prompted the central bank to raise interest rates again in July, bringing its key rate to 5%. Now, my prediction is that it's going to go up even further. Of course, as we get news that the the interest or the inflation rate has risen once again, well, they're going to have to raise interest rates to stave that off and bring that back down. This is not good for the average Canadians. Canadians are seeing grocery prices soar. Grocery prices in July were up. 8.5% as opposed to the 9% last month. But this is still more. It's still more. When you have less inflation, it's still more, higher prices nonetheless. Uh, airfare, for example, was down 2.7% in July of 2022. Uh, but here are some of the big ones that are uh, more effective. Uh, that will affect Canadian lives much more. And this is the rising cost of interest on people's mortgages. They rose in July by 30.6%. 30.6%. This is not something Canadians can afford. Central Bank is hoping households facing higher shelter costs due to rising interest rates will pull back on spending elsewhere, thereby 
slowing inflation. So, hey, just don't eat. You know, just don't eat because, you know, your mortgages are costing so much more than they used to. Here's another thing that's gone up in Alberta. Apparently, the price of electricity has gone up. The Bank of Canada stated inflation had small increase over all through amid increased summer demand. Alberta's electrical price increased by 127 percent. That is just not doable for most people out there. What? Do you mean having all that wind and solar electricity built in Alberta prices went up by 127%? This is proof that going green is problematic at best. In this scenario, you can't argue otherwise. Even the National Post is saying the permanent decline of Canadian living standards. Canadian living standards are poised to drop even as virtually every other country gets richer. So other countries are doing better and we are doing worse. We're doing way worse. And while, you know, we can we can thank all that spending that the government has been doing on all kinds of new all, all kinds of stuff that's not even benefiting us as Canadians, spending that money uh, in, in diluting the purchasing power of our savings. It's an additional tax on top of all the other taxes that they've been imposing on us to pay off the thing. It's in, insidious what they're doing. They, they spend more money, tax, which is a tax, and then tax us more to pay off that money that they spent. Isn't that incredible? TD, CIBC, RBC said 25% of their mortgages now have amortization of more than 35 years. It used to be, I think, criminal for a mortgage to be over 25 years. They weren't allowed to do it. And now we have more than 25% of the mortgages out there are 35 or 35 years. The previous year, there were zero. What could possibly go wrong? Congratulations on your new home. You're now a renter for life. And this is how things are going for a lot of Canadians. Lauren Southern chiming in on this new trend of people posting that they can't afford to live in Canada. They're just not able, and we're gonna get into some of that. I'm having conversations with Canadian friends of mine with masters from most prestigious universities in the world about how they can't afford to have children. They never saw themselves in this place with all the sacrifices they made early on for stability. If you are not a millennial, and you already own your property, you're, or if you're American, I promise you do not understand how bad the cost of living crisis is in Canada. It, it truly is. And let's get into some of this. These are videos that are going viral online, many people posting on TikTok uh, and other social media platforms, just how rough it is for Canadians right now. I just don't know what to do anymore. I'm sitting outside work, crying my eyes out in my vehicle. Because I can't function anymore. Financially, I just, I don't understand anymore. I don't understand how I make $34 an hour and I can't function. I can't function. I can't pay my bills. I am... Um, can't even literally keep gas in my car to get to work three days a week because I can't afford it. And she's not the only one. $35 an hour is something that can't people can't survive on in Canada anymore. Uh, this young lady also putting out her thing about inflation. Okay, so I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And for those of you who don't know, Canada has like a serious fucked up inflation problem right now. I just got back from doing groceries and I have $70 worth of groceries on my table right now. And I genuinely don't even know what I purchased that made it to $70. I had a fucking mini breakdown to my parents the other week. And I started like crying, like tears. They came in because I was doing a budget and they were like, how is it? And I was like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Cheers. I'm working like three jobs right now. Like I got out of university like last year in December and I have been fucking grinding it out ever since just because the cost of living and I'm not even really saving that. I'm not saving anything really, but the cost of living is outrageous in Canada. And it's just so, I was telling my parents, like, it's just so frustrating that, like, you do all the right things, you go to university and then you come out, you get a job, whatever, and you can barely fucking afford rent. 
That's this. That's the the real crux of it. Many people have done all the right things. These aren't irresponsible people. They're doing the right things, and yet they're still suffering here in Canada. I want to know how the hell people in Canada are even living. I generally consider myself a positive person. I'm like resourceful, but some stuff happened around the property and like well, I know I'll never truly be homeless. Like, I, I have family to live with. And, you know, like, I have options. Like, I'm luckier than a lot of other people. But how the hell are, is anyone existing in Canada? Like, I just, I feel trapped. And, like, like I just got a good job. I start in September. But even with that job, it pays less than 40 grand a year. And it's a job that requires, a, like, education and even on that job, like, I still can't do shit. I can't buy anything. I can't afford the rent these days. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just feeling so much despair. And, and this is the situation, of course. More people chiming in on this same thing. So I live in Ontario, and I need someone to tell me the pros and cons of living in America because at this point Canada just ain't it it's just like not it anymore like the the cost of living it's just it's too much the wages are staying the same I can't afford to move out I'm 24 and I'm embarrassed that I can't move out I can't leave my toxic household so what am I supposed to do where where am I supposed to go what are the pros and cons of living in America and everyone's like oh Canada's so great this and that it's not anymore free health care you know how long it takes to see a mental health professional in Canada? A year. Dermatologists? A year. I might as well pay for private health care. Well, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but you can't. Uh, the, the Supreme Court of Canada just ruled against Brian Day. I had Dr. Brian Day on the channel uh, to say you, you, you cannot have uh, private health care, at least in British Columbia anyway. Uh, I think only Quebecers are allowed to have that because of a ruling that they had there but this is the real situation here in Canada you just don't have a choice um, many people have fled Canada and have moved to the United States and I, I get letters and I get um, emails from these people saying what are you doing still there <laughs> and, and this is this is the reality of the situation people have left and they, they feel better once they have left but what, what, what good is that? We need to actually turn this country around. We don't want Canada to become a third world country, which is what it's becoming. Average rent spike, uh, rents spike to 2,078 national, nationally, a report says here. The average rent in Canada reached a high of $2,078 in July, according to a new report from Rentals. This is an increase of 8.9%. Compared to July 2020, the average asking rent was up 21% or $354 extra per month. And if you're in the rental market, you probably don't think that this is unusual to hear, but this is the way it's going. And guess what? 20%, 22% of home builders say they're canceling projects. And why? It's because of the bad economic activity. It doesn't look like they're going to really do well with the increased interest rates and less people entering the mortgage market if they're trying to build houses. So how are we going to how are we going to do all of this? Well, you know, the 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 theory here is just, you know, uh, <laughs> get more houses built. Well, they're not building more houses. Uh, the other part of this is red tape. Now, Pierre Polyev is saying that if he gets into government, he'll remove a lot of that red tape. Maybe that will limit some of the uh, the canceling of these projects. But I don't know if there's not a lot of people buying homes because they can't afford to. Well, it's it's the prices are going to have to come down. But there's a, a vested interest in keeping those prices high for the people that are already in them. And this is the thing. This is the thing in Canada. Now, the Treasury Board is telling the cabinet ministers to cut their spending by $15 billion in the new October 2 deadline. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert, they won't. They won't do it. 
Uh, they're just going to keep on spending, adding to the inflation here in Canada. As I said at the beginning of the video, inflation is a monetary phenomena. We're just measuring the effects of it. They're increasing the supply of currency available, Canadian dollary dues that are all hanging out there in the economy, and it's just eroding your, your savings. It's another tax as if we aren't taxed enough in Canada. But hey, let me leave this one up to you guys. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about this and all of the situation with the economy here in Canada. I hate to be so doom and gloom about this one this morning, but hey, this is the reality of the situation here in this country. So leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.